So apparently the U.S. military is prepping and, of course, they are preparing and upping monitoring of all of the bases. It says that U.S. military steps up Middle East surveillance as threats to troops grow. So we've already seen and heard chatter that uh, troops are in danger or have already had some things happen. Uh, But now they are essentially putting it out there that they are upping and hiking intelligence. In fact, an important part here, it says the measures include increasing U.S. military patrols, uh, restricting access to base facilities, and hiking intelligence collection, uh, including through drone and other surveillance. Uh, It says that officials say speaking on a condition of anonymity. So it could be BS, but again, it says the U.S. military is also beefing up monitoring from guard towers on U.S. military facilities, hiking security at base access points, and increasing operations to counter potential incoming drones, rockets, and missiles, officials say. So the same time that this is going on, in the last week, obviously yesterday we just had our president uh, step away, said that he had to go to the Situation Room or the Little Boys Room, who knows, and everybody's still debating. Uh, But at the same point, people are more alarmed by if he had to step away for the Situation Room, why? Situation Room is like if you're taken out uh, Bin Laden or something, that's when they step in the Situation Room. Or if there was an attack on American soil or something like that, that's when they go to the Situation Room. Um, if they're taking out a high-valued uh, target or something, you know, super, super high, uh, you know, high importance uh, issues get handled there, right? And especially if something happens. Uh, so at the same time, we just uh, this week had a world advisory put out, or what was it? The State Department put a world notice out. Essentially, the entire world should be uh, keeping their eyes peeled because they say that there's an, uh, a, a larger chance that people related to either one of these countries could do some sort of T attack. So now you have them upping surveillance. They have upping uh, specifically at bases watching for something. It would not surprise me, and I hope this does not happen, especially since we have our amazing men and women serving, that something happens, some sort of fantastic Freddy happens at a base. We already have enough events happening at bases as is, and a lot of the times it's it's either a a rogue soldier or something like this, Uh, but what they're looking out for seems kind of obvious, like somebody's going to drive in or try to go into one of these bases and try to take people out or rocket uh, rocket launch something from afar. So we're going to talk about this and many of the other changes going on. We're, of course, going to cover uh, kind of the broad spectrum of what's going on in the last 24 hours. So stick around. Today's show is going to be good. It is a live show, so anything can happen. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, Can't say thank you enough. All right, if you're new to our show, we always have a bibliography for every single episode. So make sure to go check out marfuglenews.com where you're going to see, of course, Uh, Today's thumbnail, Massive Evacuation, Prepping Mass Evacuations in the Middle East. Uh, Once you go there, you will see that there is a full bibliography 
of every single article, tweet, video, picture, document, including today's uh, show, is right there at the top. So you can actually click this, and you can watch right on our website, single- live even. So make sure to go check that out. And, of course, we'll talk about at the very end, uh, overflow and web content, all the stuff that we didn't fit into the show, we'll hit on that at the very end. So stay tuned. There's a lot here. Uh, let's bring in my co host internet brother, Dex James. What is going on, and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. So a uh, quick shout out to all of the wonderful mods. Make sure to drop an M in the chat right now uh, for all of the great moderators. These are all friends of mine. These are all people I've known for years. So make sure, again, to uh, respect the general rules. Don't talk trash about other creators. Don't talk trash about other chatters. If you disagree, do it in a polite way. You can always say, this is why I believe what I believe. And the other person could say, well, this is what I believe what I believe. If you start fighting, that's when things uh, that's when things start getting south, and that's when things get muted or uh, hit. Otherwise, it, most of the time, is as long as everybody's being positive about what's going on, uh, it's going to be a fun time. So, um, there's a lot of people in chat. There, sometimes there's anywhere from three to five thousand. So the moderators do an awesome job. You can support them by going over and, of course, uh, following them on their channels. Uh, go to their Amazon links. In the case of Chance Paladin, has great books. Uh, link trees as far as Gem Gem. Uh, all sorts of great people over there. And Rip Curl's been joining us a lot in a lot of the shows. Thank you so much, Rip. I, uh, I've seen you, and, and I just wanted to shout you out. Um, all right. And then, uh, Dex, let's so talk about this. So we just talked about how they are essentially there's all these warnings all of these warnings are going out the state department's warning world travel and even created a program called step uh the step program is essentially you can sign up for alerts wherever you are in the world so if you're traveling abroad you can sign up for a state department app that not only gives you the alerts and emergency alerts for where you are it can also help them locate you uh isn't that isn't that just uh uh convenient right um, so th- that essentially will give you emergency alerts wherever you go, but it will also track you wherever you are. And of course, now people are lining up for it. They're literally going, I need this. Even if they're not traveling, people are signing up for it. And guess what? The reason why is I might get taken one of these days. I might be at a a, a festival or at a movie theater or at a Walmart even. I've seen people uh, you know, afraid to go to Walmarts and things. So, again, don't live your life how you want to. And I, I, my personal advice is don't sign up for something like that. But, again, um, yeah, you can weigh your own uh, risk and uh, pros and cons on that one. Um, so thank you for everybody that just dropped an M in the chat for the mods. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. If it, and then uh, we're going to get started here. But if you do want to do a quick roll call, love to see where everybody's from. And immediately you start finding other people from the same state or province. I uh, don't have to be specific, but again, just drop a state or a province, and then you can meet all of the other Fugal fam from that place. Uh, Dex, do you want to talk about U.S. agrees to send two Iron Dome batteries to Israel? So apparently, if you don't recall, everyone, we actually purchased these uh, a while back from uh, the Israeli defense company that manufactures them. We purchased two of them to augment some uh, defense areas we thought we were going to use, and we thought we might even use them more. And we, it turns out we don't really use it that often. Guam? Uh, so we're planning to give it back uh, and send them back because they're much needed uh, in the event that's happening in Israel right now. So, um, yeah, they said that uh, several years ago we purchased them uh, it was to fill a gap in cruise mental def- defense while the Army was developing a longer-term countermeasure for various air and missile threats. Um, I don't, I think we did talk about them going to Guam or going somewhere else. Uh, they were, um, they've sat in a unit at joint base Lewis McCord, uh, up there in your neck of the woods, Adam, for quite a, quite some time and rarely get used. So these are going back. They said they'll give them to them so they can help. So <clears throat> we're at, um, but doesn't that kind of leave us? And again, this, this is like, it leaves us open. There was a, um, uh, Fugle fam military member, uh, few years ago it seems like at least two years ago that we were talking about how they they got the iron dome system for guam I feel like it was guam i don't think it was hawaii i feel like it was guam and they said that and alaska possibly uh but they said that there was a heightened alert around uh they they were hearing chatter about all of these all these different events with china and russia and this is way before this is before the invasion even 
Um, I just remember they were saying that they, in the long run, they needed to start prepping up uh, some sort of missile defense system that is uh, more regional. So something that would even protect it against smaller things. Um, and that was something that was entailed in a long-term plan to try to, uh, try to get the readiness up and everything else. Well, now they're actually sending the batteries back. One thought that crossed my brain is how we are now constantly sending our own stuff and our own defenses that, uh, that are, you know, to protect us. We are now sharing them with all sorts of other places. Um, so does this leave a gap in our security? Obviously, we had them in the first place for some reason. But again, they say that they're just sitting up at Lewis McCord. But that's up here in Seattle. So maybe there's a purpose. Are they active there? Can anybody uh, from Lewis McCord, if it's public information, let me know? Like, are these, uh, do we currently have Iron Dome systems um, active at Lewis McCord or do they just sit there uh, turned off? Love to, love to know, it, unless it's classified, then don't let me know. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But if it's public, I would love to know. Um, and then Washington, did, go ahead. I was going to say, they did say that they had trained with them at Fort Bliss in Texas, and they did deploy them for Guam, and they only left them there for two weeks. And according to them, they've literally been sitting dormant at Lewis McCord. So I it, it, I don't know if, if that's just what they're saying to make it sound good, but that's that's the backstory. So kind of interesting. If you sure. if you've ever dealt with the Iron Dome system, uh, let it let us know in the chat or in in uh, comments down below. Uh, do they take a lot of power to turn on? Like uh, they probably use a lot of power, I'd assume, because it's not the actual launching that takes the 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 issue is the sensors, right? I would assume this is kind of like a a Patriot system in in a way, and I'm not saying they're exactly alike, but there would for it to hit a target, it needs to have some sort of array of sensors. And I bet they would take a lot of power if you just had them running full full time. But again, it's defense of the country. You'd think that would be a top priority over everything. Uh, but we, we also do have other defense systems other than that. But from what I have covered in the past, uh, they have co they've wrote all sorts of pieces about how our systems though, over the last few years, they have been failing their tests. They've been, if something was to come at us, it was like they, they were talking about it was a 50% chance it would get one, this and that. Uh, yeah. And then Washington Free Beacon Poll send in the Marines to rescue American hostages. So <laughs> people are now calling for it. It says an overwhelming majority of American motors, 73% support deploying Marines to rescue Americans held uh, by hostages in, in the Gaza Strip. That would be our boots on the ground in the strip, which would then put us at odds directly with Iran and every other country that is now in the argument with Israel. Now, on the other hand, there's Americans involved in this. What do you guys think? This is a complicated one. I don't think that this is just so cut and dry because, uh, but you would think if they really didn't want trouble, from the U.S., if I bet you, and I, my, here's just my feeling: if we had a different president, the president, possibly any of the other ones, would be threatening them to the point where, like, we're gonna nuke you off the planet if you don't release every single American right now. You know, don't care what you do with the other people, but you give us every single American, and a threat like that uh, carries weight, or at least it used to. And I bet you would see within 24 hours every American on a uh, on a, a bus home. Uh, Dex, go ahead. Well, you know, right now we're indirectly a target of the opposition there. Um, I think if we rolled our troops into the Strip, uh, we would then become the target, just like is, is the target for them right now. Um, that would change the dynamics tremendously. Um, I, I get it. While while we would rather trust our own troops to retrieve our Americans, and we think they could roll in and roll out and get them out, um, I suspect that would be a really that would be a game changer if we put our boots in there um, for many different reasons. Yeah, <laughs> not just never mind the fact that is is operating this. Um, I mean, certainly we could tell them, hey, we're going to not give you the billions of dollars that we're going to give you if you don't let us do it. But at the same time. Uh, we would have the bullseye move directly to us uh, as opposed to indirectly. Not that we don't have it. We have it, but it'll be a lot worse. 
Sean C. says, we need a clear and direct message, not just uh, don't, right? They, and that's what we've been hearing. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, not everybody approved the T-Man uh, messaging with uh, Kim Jong-un. But when you say, like, we're going to bring fire and fury and, like, wipe you off the planet, that kind of stuff works, um, especially when it's not a bluff. Like, well... Even if it was a bluff, it's like we have the systems to, to basically destroy any country on the planet. So do they really want to go to war with the U.S.? Uh, or at least directly, right? If, if everybody else. But that's why I think that this is more complicated. Something else is going on here. Uh, Baron Saturday says, uh, Joe Biden is on this. Just relax. He, he's got it. He's got it covered. No, Baron, I, I completely agree with you. Um uh, and your completely non-sarcastic comment. Uh, yeah, he's got it. He's he's taking care of, of business in the situation room, or the little situation room. Uh, and then U.S. preparing for possible mass evacuation if General Hamas war escalates. So there's all different angles on this. I guarantee some of you are thinking, oh, this is just another fear tactic, and it very well might be. But when I look at the big picture, I see a whole lot of things all at the same time. And I'm at odds with a bunch of my peers, too. A lot of my peers think that everything is completely fake. Um, I feel like this is par for the course of a real world, world War III that will further an agenda for a certain group of people. Um, I feel there are people in charge that absolutely want a absolute real war that takes lives of many, many, many. Uh, but that's my view. Again, some of my peers are completely opposite. Uh, they feel that everything is just a scare tactic and it's, n it's not going to go any further than that. I don't personally believe that. You can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, but Dex, do you want to explain how they're saying that they're preparing for mass evacuations? Okay, so this is coming out of the the White House. It's not official. It's unofficial because it's coming from unnamed sources speaking to um, the Washington Post specifically, and so the ones claiming the intel. Um, but what they're saying is one of the scenarios that they're having to build a plan for is how they would do the mass evacuation of U.S. citizens out of Israel and out of uh Lebanon, as well as other locations. But those two are obviously the most uh, at risk and there's about 600,000 U.S. citizens in Israel and about 86,000 uh, in uh, Lebanon. So, um, and of course, other numbers throughout other Arab countries there as well. Um, so that's a pretty large scale. Um, and now, mind you, not all would want to leave. Many, many of them are actually dual citizens, so they may live there um, and just have U.S. citizenship, and they may not want to leave, or they may want to take claim of their U.S. citizenship and leave. So how would you deal with that? Um, and what is the plan? And they're they're apparently building a plan on how to deal with that. And it has to come together rather quickly if, if this thing escalates overnight, as they're expecting. Now, so Mark Cassidy says, uh, unnamed source means completely made up. So not always. It could mean three-letter agency. It could be CIA. And they purposely use the media to release information like this to specifically do that. Uh, but but I, I do know, and um, I've met a, a couple of big-time reporters in my life, and a couple of them actually watched our channel for a while. Uh, don't know if they still watch, but they have pointed out that an, uh, government anonymous sources is a very real thing, and it's not always propaganda. So what one thing we look at it like is like you don't know what's real and what's fake. So... In the prepper mentality, even if it's a 0.1 chance, even if you know it's very unlikely that it's real, you always prepare for that possible outcome. And you do it in a responsible fashion, so you don't put all your eggs in that basket, but you at least put a egg in that basket, and you, you make sure. As far as I agree with you, though, like when it, it's always an unnamed source on the condition of anonymity. When you think about how every single day there's an anonymous source with, on the condition of anonymity... There's constantly, and it's like the game of House of Cards. Dex, did you ever watch House of Cards? Oh, yeah. How they had, they always had like the, the guy that would meet him at a park and say, oh, yeah, this and this and that. You know, they would sit on a park bench and they'd hand him cash and he'd go, yeah, I think this is going on. 
It, there was always like the information people, right? What's They're always brokering deals. Absolutely. In the, in the yeah. media like that, uh, you know, and sometimes they'll release something just because they got to pay back because they got something held back and they owed them a favor. So they're calling it up and saying, you got to give me something now. You know, there's all sorts of ways that this goes down. And certainly there's plenty, like you said, that could be planted and there's plenty that could just be made up, but uh, we'll never know. But there's enough. We do know that they talk. They do talk all the time and they do say it under anonymity because they can't release it. Like if they said this, you know, it would be coming officially from, the white house well it's not an official statement so well yeah and and just like you've we've all seen this in the movies but this happens on a real basis like all the time and what happens is they get paid that's the thing for information they get paid and w- when you start thinking of it like that it starts looking a whole lot more realistic because if you're talking about a paycheck for literal words then yeah you know these greedy mofos are going to be giving up information left and right. But when you think about that, you realize how many traitors are in our government. If you look at the sheer number of every single day articles, there's got to be a good percentage of them that are real, that aren't just the media making up. Because if the media makes it up and it's something really serious like this, there is there are consequences and, and our justice system is broken, but it, it works in a lot of, of different ways as far as some of the stuff. But they do a lot, a lot of anonymous things go through, right? And a lot of them end up being BS. But if you really think about how many politicians are anonymously giving out things, that's a traitor. That's essentially the, they're, they're committing treason by saying these things. It, it, it really does put a... Uh, when you see how much of it is every single day from every part of our government, there's informants then you realize everybody's just looking for the next uh, payout. Everybody is, is willing to turn over that information in a heartbeat. That's scary. Like, think about how many traitors we have in our own government. Because, I mean, it's technically they are doing something treasonous by giving out information that should not be given out. So it can purposely go through the media. I mean, how many, how many times a day do you see, uh, based on the condition of anonymity, right? What they're doing is wrong. If we, I mean, if we really had a, how it's supposed to work is you really don't say anything. The media does not know anything about any of this. If it's to work properly, if you were looking at it from the government point of view, but our government's so corrupt that of course, every, every step of the way, there's somebody tattletaling. And that's why it's so messed up because now the three letter agencies know that that happens and they use that to their advantage and they purposefully use it. They'll tell somebody something knowing that they're going to go to somebody, uh, knowing that they're going to tell some newspaper because they're watching and, and monitoring their cell phones and everything else. So they use it to their advantage. So you always got to watch with these ones. Uh, Dex, go ahead. Well, and since this is coming from the administra- or from inside the administration, it can actually be the administration intentionally doing it, but they need plausible deniability. So they can say, hey, we want to put this out there, but we don't want to put it out there officially. So you know, hey, Sally, go call and and report this and do it as anonymous. Spawn23 says, I'm surprised Gen Z can have a real conversation as it would mean looking up from their phones and actually talking to each other. other. (laughs) Uh, Circa 2030, you'll see House of Cards 2030, and it'll be two millennials on the the park bench texting it to each other. Uh, They probably do text it. They they probably do. They probably FaceTime these uh, informant talks now. I don't know, kind of stupid since all the three-letter agencies are watching it. But uh, before we move on, make sure to go check out EMP Shield. This is a device that can protect your cars, your trucks, your motorcycles, anything that you want to keep running after an EMP strike or a CME or a Carrington-level event from the sun, you want to have one of these on it. They're very easy to install as far as the car versions um, or even the micro. It's red on red on your battery, black on black on your battery, And then, of course, green to ground. So green goes to a part of your frame. And then that will ground the signal in less than 500 trillionths of a second before it's able to fry your device, your car, your truck, your motorcycle, your RV, your generators, your gas or solar generators, in the case of the Energy Flex 1500, um, or even your home. You can wire one into your home and it will protect everything within the 250 linear feet of where it is uh, wired in. That means everything in an average size house 250 feet away uh, plugged in will be protected as well. 
So that's a huge advantage for a one-time purchase. Once it's wired in, you have that protection. And it's something that you won't need until you need. Uh, but one of the things for the house version is it can protect you against lightning. That's a huge, huge advantage. We just had somebody in the Fugal fam and their house was saved while the house next door was condemned. So that was pretty awesome to hear. Um, again, this is a great device and it's something that nobody wants to do because it's not going to help them currently. But if the event happens, then you're going to definitely thank yourself. Marfuglenews.com slash EMP and make sure to use the code MARF. You'll save $50 off per device. And that, uh, that adds up, especially if you need to protect two or three cars, or if you want to do a house and a car or a car and a generator, uh, $50 per device. And it stacks on top of all of their sales. So whatever holiday sales, whatever uh, current sales they have going on, it always stacks. So it's extra free money. It helps you. It helps us. And of course, it's a win-win for everybody. Marfuglenews.com slash EMP. And then China dismisses defense minister amid swirl of speculation. Just four months ago, China's defense minister, Jin Li Shangfu, was at a forum for regional officials in Singapore serving as the face of his country's bold vision for reshaping Asia's balance of power. He cast China as a force for stability and accused the United States of stirring trouble in the region, suggesting its leaders should, quote, mind your own business, because that's how they do it. <clears throat> and it says now General Li has been dismissed after nearly two months out of public view. The latest examples of China's capricious rules of power under the strongman leader Xi Jinping. You, you know what's you know what I, I have noticed lately too? And I think I pointed this out before. They rush uh Vlad is madman, desperate, blah, blah, blah. Have you noticed how and you, you know that China owns huge swaths of media? Dex, have you noticed they always say something like strongman or um or brawler or some like masculine name for Xi Jinping? Well, Vlad, they call desperate or they call uh, sad little man Vlad or blah, blah, blah. You know, they just put in all these verbs. Have you noticed they're always the, these positive kind of like, they're never a negative, like shady. It's never like shady Xi Jinping or, uh, you know, thief Xi Jinping. Or, or Pooh Bear. Or Pooh Bear Xi Jinping. It's always something like this. Because I've pointed this out for years. I know some people don't care, but if you if you start noticing the language that media uses, uh, like they'll 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 have you thinking something before you even read it. In the headline, it will say, you know, desperate, uh, desperate, sad, crazy Vlad says this, and already you the reader, if they didn't know anything, they go, oh, he's crazy. This crazy person did this. With him, it's always strong man or. I'm trying to think there was another one the other day that said um, absolute ruler uh, Xi Jinping. It's like, why aren't they saying like some of the, the verbs that should go along with that? Like, you know, at shady mob Xi Jinping or something. And then China's announcement on Tuesday ended some uncertainty about General Li's professional fate, but leaves open questions about whether he is being investigated for any offenses. Officials in the U.S. had earlier said that the Chinese authorities had placed him under an investigation of corruption. General Li is the second Chinese minister to be purged this year without explanation and under a cloud of suspicion. It says Qin Gang was dis dismissed in July. Uh, the general's removal also followed an abrupt shakeup in the leadership of China's nuclear force, the highest level upheaval in China's military in recent years. I don't know if you also remembered this. They lost half of their nuclear scientists. This was like three or four years ago. And this still gets me to this day. And I don't forget the news. This is why I archive everything. And I, I bring up stuff that's old. They lost half of their nuclear scientists in one day. And it was like, it was out of 200. It was almost 100 of their scientists. 100 out of 200 left and resigned in the same day. And it makes you think, why would 100 nuclear scientists leave? These are the guys who develop nuclear weapons, this or that, this or that. What kind of blood did they not want on their hands? 
Did they know something that was going to happen? Were they like, I'm not playing a part of this? Were they leaving over moral reasons? Like they're not going to be a part of them taking the lives of millions of people? Something. Why? Why did half of them leave? Uh, understand that when you leave and you screw the government like that because you're not an easily replaceable person, you're not just, uh, you're, you're not just a, a disposable person, you're a nuclear scientist. It's not like you can just go down to the market and grab another one. They, they were very high demand and everything. You're going to have a target on your back. You guys remember that? I still wonder about that. And with all of the government changes China's done, and you put kind of the bigger picture in here, it's like they are customizing their uh, their government and their administration regime, whatever you want to call it, to be a very specific uh, weapon. Uh, Dex, what do you think? What do you think it means that General Lee uh, got taken taken down a notch? Well, it sounds to me like uh, G is making some swift changes and uh, you know getting things prepared for his next endeavors and maybe he wasn't the right person to perform the job that he wanted done which as we know is at the forefront is going to be the uh control of the south china sea and the taking back of taiwan and by the way this is actually from china's news i'm surprised that they're the first ones that pop up it says more than 90 nuclear safety scientists with the institute under the Chinese economy, has resigned in mass, according to media reports. This was in 2020, right at the beginning of CV, with an unusual high uh, number of resignation drawing public attention considering the essential service the scientists provide. And this is out of, it was like 194. So half. I, I don't understand that. Um, so that's, somebody asked what country, and I think they were responding to this what country was that it was china half of their nuclear scientists just left it's freaking weird i'll never forget this there are certain things that stick out of my brain that i think it's like you gotta pop a, a pin in it and then come back to it later because it will it means something that's what i think um did they see plans like plans for the future obviously like mike minahan and many others have made comments and memos in our government that said by 2027, we're going to see this, you know, thing going on. What kind of chatter did they hear about China? What kind of events do you think is, did, did they think is coming? Um, and then Washington State Senator arrested in China for carrying a bang bang through the airport. What's so funny is, like, even if you do the hand gesture for a bang bang, if you subtract uh, two fingers here, that will get you a, a little algorithm trigger thing on the underneath it. So nuts. Um, but Chinese authorities have arrested Washington State Senator Jeff Wilson, a Republican, for arriving with the bang bang in his luggage at Hong Kong International Airport Friday night. It says according to the statement Wilson's website, the senator didn't realize he had his pistol in his carry-on bag. Who forgets that? Sorry, but that's just like that's crazy stupid. Um makes me think it says which made it through a security checkpoint at portland international airport before he transferred in san francisco and finally arrived in hong kong dex do you realize what they just said here oh yeah tsa is investigating it and so this this is a big deal uh for two different reasons one you know, as a concealed carry, you know, it's common to have a bag. You keep your, especially if it's your day bag, you keep, you run around with it. You might keep it in your bag. If you're not wearing it on your body. It is very common. And I know it's, it's a, it's like a, something you shouldn't do. Like the first thing I think about when I'm going through the airport is, is anything like that on me because I don't want to be stopped by TSA and we don't want to forfeit that or uh, lose it or anything else. Um, but yeah, apparently he made it through. They didn't detect it, He's... so now they're investigating it. He found it when he was in flight. Now, according to him, there's two different stories. He found it in flight and said as soon as he got there, he went to customs and said, hey, I need to tell you, I have this, and I didn't mean to bring it. BS. So they arrested him. Now, they're saying that they found it in a bag check, and they arrested him when he landed. So he... there's two different stories going on here. He is a spy. Nobody gets through TSA, even if you're a senator, with a weapon, okay? <laughs> 
they i i saw them the freaking um uh, Seattle mayor, the not not this one, but the last one. I was at TSA behind, and the mayor was with a bunch of people. They tore his stuff apart. The Seattle TSA literally tore his stuff apart for whatever reason. He was picked, and he was mad about it. Or no, was it a she? Oh, it was the person that was directly with the mayor tore their stuff apart. And it's like they didn't care who they were. <laughs> They they randomly picked him. They said, you're going through all of this. Shoes off, everything. So I think I, there's no way. I, I, I agree with whoever said that. CIA op, all written all over it. So who is this guy? Uh, again, his name is Senator Jeff Wilson. He was on some sort of mission. State you, senator. State senator. So That's something weird, okay? You don't get through with a pistol in your carry-on. He could have taken a plane over. You think it's just because he was a senator? No. They, they, he had some sort of pass. So, some, somebody let him, and he was going to China. What does that tell you? Um, he could have been an assassin. That, that's, a, that's what's so crazy is this. In the real world, there's probably senators, people like this, that are actual CIA agents that are put into place. Now it makes me want to look into like what is his history, what is his stuff about. Maybe he's not. Maybe it was generally a, a thing. But the fact that there's two different stories, oh, that he reported it right away, which sounds like the PR story, and they found it in his bag, that sounds like something changed. Sorry, I don't believe it. Do you guys leave it in the comments down below? Uh, thank your mods. Again, they're being awesome. Neil Nelson, by the way, thank you for the super thanks on the last show. Uh, appreciate that very much. Thank you, Mac Gillespie, for joining uh, as a member. Quintress, uh, Pilgrim, Atomic Punk, New York City, Awake in 1979, just joined. Thank you. Jonathan Earl, Stanton's Shenanigans, uh, Danish Girl, thank you for again rejoining. Uh, I think you hit the two month. And then Amy R., it's nice to see you're back. I know every I, everybody has stuff going on and they have to leave for a bit of time, but thank you so much. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, try licit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you for your support yesterday. Appreciate that. Prairie Wind says, I appreciate the foresight your news provides. Well, thank you, Prairie Wind. I appreciate that. Uh, Heath Spear, thank you as well from Australia. And then Kent Reader at the very beginning of the, the show. Thank you so much for your support. Again, uh, thank you for the super sticker. Uh, Dex, go ahead. Hey, just one quick stat out of that article. I love statistics. They uh, they said that now the TSA has intercepted 6,540 uh, bang bangs last year. But what's interesting is that in the last 10 years, that number is up from only 1,900. So that's a huge jump uh, for the number. that. So I don't know if it's that they're picking up that many more uh, or if it's just that many more people are trying to bring them on or forgetting and bringing them on. Uh, but that's a huge jump from 1,900 to 6,540 per year. Well, it, you you also could uh, attribute that to how absolutely horrendous the airports are now. I mean, they just, they tear you apart. Um, it's nuts. They, they look at you. They look at you naked with their crazy machines. They're all like Superman with, uh, with very little pay. Uh, world on the verge of space war as Russian satellite shows sign of aggression to U.S. To me, I, I feel like this is going to go, this is actually going to get bigger and bigger. As far as the space war, uh, two of our super high-ranking equivalent of five-star generals in Space Force, or at least one that was equivalent to a four-star general, um, in the Space Force said that we are already at war in space, that there is a war going on right now in space. Uh, we covered that before CV, so probably 2018 or something. Or uh, maybe it was during CV, 2020, 19, 2020. Uh, but obviously there's been multiple officials now, which they're not afraid. I don't know why they're not afraid of saying that. They're saying there's a war going on above us. And then during that same time, you had the Department of Defense come out and say that directed energy was not only not a conspiracy, but it was real. Before, if you even said that word on the internet, 
it was considered you were fringe. Now it's it's real. It's not even real. It's a fact. Um, now it's bragged about, right? The rod of God type weapons and things like this. That's what's going on. Or at least that's what they're telling us. Uh, but it says the world is on the verge of a space war after the United States thought Russia was showing signs of aggression high above Earth. You know what's really scary about this is the one thing that we have been talking about for a long time, and we've talked about it since there were stories about how Russia was developing a very specific satellite that had, and Dex, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I always get these flip-flopped. One had lasers on it that could take out other satellites, which now they're saying they're going to add lasers to some of the Starlink. And then another I believe Russia had the one with an arm on it that could grab other satellites and pull them out of orbit, basically destroying them. Um, it would basically grab on and then jettison it out of orbit, and it would therefore take it out of commission. And I believe they could crush it, something like that. But it's like we're waiting for some sort of cyber event or some sort of event that it takes out communications, things like this. Um, mind you, if you start off, if you've ever seen kind of the, what they say is up there, there's a current, it looks like bugs around a light. There's thousands and thousands of satellites going around all positions at all times. If one of them goes out, it can start a domino effect, or that's at least what they say. I think it was the movie Gravity, might've been Gravity, I forget which one with uh, Sandra Bullock. Yeah, I think it was Gravity, but it shows... Um, these satellites essentially starting a domino effect and hitting other satellites, and then it starts this debris field that catches all of the satellites, takes them out, and then all of a sudden you don't have communications. Why that would be important is you would run that alongside of something else. If you took out the enemy's satellites and then took out you know EMP or power, you would completely cripple them. So... Obviously, people are going to say, oh, it's it's all it's either Ganda or it's fear. It's this or that. But from the prepper standpoint, even if it's a 0.1 percent, this is something that we've talked about for years. And that uh, I've always thought that this is something that is very likely as far as an event in space that takes out our GPS. That's what they're drilling for. That's what the exercises are doing. They're drilling using our military without GPS and without communications. Uh, DHS, even as part of one of their releases, they asked uh, for a, a sh very short deadline uh, to have developed rapidly deployable checkpoints, uh, phone apps, that, uh, a phone device that could actually uh, detect z um, disease and, and radiation and things like that. Uh, they had a mass casualty tracking system, which they say they already have a something of that. They wanted another mass fatality tracking system that could detect, you know, basically track everyone that perishes in a huge, huge event. And then also they uh, put in their broadband communications that don't need a tower, or that don't need cell, cell service. So some sort of um, long range, cross the country walkie talkie that was a brand new system that wasn't developed on anything we have right now. So all of these things kind of tells you something. Plus Operation, um, uh, Operation, what is it, Star? What, what is the, the, what was that operation with the balloons that could put up satellites in an emergency? Starfall. Operation Starfall. Look it up. You're going to trip. Within 45 days, if they enact that, uh, they already have Operation Starfall. It's already a thing. But within, when they pass that, or if they get that bill in, it, within 45 days, they would put these balloons up with satellites that could essentially replace our systems. I think that would be used in the event of something like what they're talking about right here. Aggression towards our satellites. Um, but yeah, it says the several sources, U.S.-based slingshot aerospace officials were panicking after it spotted Russia moving one of its Luch satellites to within 60 kilometers of one of the satellites put into orbit by an unnamed Western nation, which is weird by itself, an unnamed Western nation. The company tracks satellites in space using AI, that's even freakier, and spotted the Luch 56 uh, satellite coming dangerously close, and it was seen as an act of aggression. So what's going on there? What's going on above our heads? 
Dex, do you want to go over UKR came close to it, taking out the leader of Russia's entire military when he visited the front lines, report says. Well, in the latest round of spin from UKR, we've got, let's take a failure and call it a, uh, a, a success. They're trying to say that they almost took out a top Russian military official, as if that's supposed to be something to brag about. Um, I think it's better when you say you actually achieved something. But this is coming out of UKR. It's coming from uh, WAPO. It is being cited from UKR Intelligence. And they're saying that, yes, we tried and we were successful at taking out many people. But one of the people we tried and just didn't get done was Jarasimov, who is uh, Valery Jarasimov is the chief of general staff of Russia's military. Um, so apparently they said they did uh, try and he was under attack and they just weren't successful at doing it. They did not state the dates, the times or any of that. There's been some speculation as to when that may have happened. There was a time that he was at visiting the front lines and there was a lot of, uh, um, you know, bombardment around that time. But uh, again, it was unsuccessful. So I kind of question like why is this something coming out of their intelligence and why is wapo making a story out of it to say they failed at something um and they're trying to brag about it but anyway it kind of goes hand in hand with what we talked about yesterday they were talking about all of the uh, these acts that they've been doing uh to take out top officials uh and it's being done by an organization that was uh as russia claims and uh, i think it's probably true uh was being developed by the U.S.'s Central Intelligence Agency. It's just kind of like saying, I, I, I was this close to, to getting her number. I was this close to graduating. I, well, so did you? No. And then UKR's leader says, Russian naval assets are no longer safe in the Black Sea near Crimea. Uh, again, we'll talk about this, and we're actually going to go into... Uh, we're actually going to touch on that Telegram channel uh, here in a second, too. The, the General SVR, I believe. Uh, before we do, just want to remind you, if you haven't already, make sure to go check out marfuglenews.com slash prep. You can get 25-year shelf life food that's going to last for a very long time. Again, over two decades. It will be good until 2052. And uh, again, this is food that will uh, be easily stored. It takes up very small uh, small space as far as the room because it is all vacuum packed into Mylar bags. Um, again, it's freeze dried, so it keeps in almost all of the flavor and it lasts extremely long. So it's a really great thing to have, not just for the end of the world, uh, but for also regular disasters, uh, storms, hurricanes, earthquakes, whatever it may be. If you have something like this, it's a very, very uh, secure thing to have. Again, they always have a really, really awesome deal. Uh, for any of their affiliates. So again, uh, make sure to go check what the current one is, but it's usually in the range of $200 or 25% off on their three month. And they always usually have a one month and different sales going on. So go over to marfuglenews.com slash prep right now at marfuglenews.com slash prep. And you don't need a code for that one. Just use the website and you will, uh, I believe it automatically puts it in. And uh, Dex, actually, you want to cover the, uh, they're saying that naval assets are no longer safe. Well, uh, you know, big claims again coming from UKR that they're, uh, you know, we've seen some success, at least from the sense that they've sent their uh, drones in and they've taken out a few ships. So they've made claims that they were leaving. They made claims that they took out the, the admiral and the commanders of the Black Sea fleet, but then that turned up the next day to not be true. Uh, but here they are. They're saying again, hey, any of the of Russia's fleet is no longer capable of operating in the Black Sea <clears throat> and is gradually retreating uh, from Crimea, according to Zelensky. So uh, he didn't provide any actual evidence, um, but he did end the quote with saying this is a historic achievement. So um, take it for what it's worth. It's a rah-rah from him uh, saying that they're successful at driving out Russia's fleet. I'm not sure if <laughs> how, how successful they've been. Uh, you know, again, we've covered what they've done, but at the same time, you know, this is a rah-rah piece from him. Uh, to, uh, at, to some extent, you have to just like put a big old 
shake our salt over it and go, okay, well, let's see what the real numbers and how it really shakes out in the end. Speaking of uh, salt shaker, we still don't know what to think about the general SVR. And that it's a Telegram channel that has gotten coverage a lot. Um, in fact, yesterday, it, lo- tons of people were talking about this. And again, I'm not going to say that it is not correct or that it is correct or anything because there have been some things that they have said that have come true. But it revolving door of health stuff that's that's going on, um, again, I don't think you can debunk it or say it's true, but Business Insider put this piece out essentially saying, be very wary of the Telegram account claiming Putin was found convulsing from a heart attack. So this is their kind of debunk piece, right? It says, it's a wild Putin health rumor time again. It says, on Tuesday, tabloid news outlets breathlessly wrote up that the Kremlin had denied claims about President Vladimir Putin having brushed with death. They originated in a post by an anonymous Russian Telegram account, General SVR, an infamous source of juicy but unsubstantiated tales about Vlad and his circle. The account claimed that Vlad was found on Sunday, I've caught, we talked about this last night, convulsively arched in the throes of a, uh, an attack of his heart. It says, uh, it went on to say, has been represented by a body double at recent meetings. So these are all things that, by the way, it doesn't matter how you cover them. They end up saying, oh, this is fake news, this or that. Especially what's crazy is the whole, the double, the body double stuff. It's like they'll end up like knocking off channels for that. But then the next day, the president of UKR will say the same thing. And it's like, (laughs) but you can't talk about it. Um, What gets me is the stuff that you say. Usually I find more truth in the stuff that they're knocking people off for saying. I don't find that that's like the fake stuff. That's why they're knocking people off. I find that's because it's usually the the true stuff. But who knows? In a response, Putin's uh, spokesman Dmitry Peskov called the health rumor a, quote, hoax and said the talk of the body doubles does not ind- induce anything but a smile to Kremlin insiders as a state-controlled outlet task reported. Now, remember, General SVR is like basically the equivalent of isn't it like the equivalent of cia dex it's it's their equivalent they 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 claim to be run by former well current and former members of the russian foreign intelligence service or svr is the term they use so you're gonna get the western view of it you're gonna get their view of it um Obviously, they don't. They don't verify it. Western doesn't. Nobody verifies this. Nobody is saying that it's correct. But at the same time, media is more than willing to use it for big headlines because it grabs people, right? It, there, there's propaganda on both sides. This could be CIA. <laughs> this could be a bunch of CIA guys. Like, let's pretend to be Russians. <laughs> like, literally, this could be like a joke to them. They could be sitting in their office, like, what should we say? <laughs> Say he's like arched in a weird position in his bedroom or something. Make it believable. Say he was watching Teletubbies. I for some reason I just see him watching Teletubbies. He's a weirdo. Secret level. Hey, they use three letter. They use three letters of the alphabet, not one. Oh, that's right. Good point. And then secret level version of Microsoft 365 rolls out to top Pentagon offices this month. So, first of all, the word Microsoft and Pentagon, personally, I think they should find a, another company. I know there's not much competition, but if you think about Microsoft's old runner has been going to personal dinners at G's house, don't know. And uh, constantly, Microsoft is the one that says that they keep finding that China is hacking them and that there's been all of these massive attacks and massive hacks. And now they are going to provide the Pentagon with a uh, new version of Microsoft 365. Hmm. Thousands of users across the Defense Department's fourth estate will get their first chance to use modern collaboration tools on classified IT networks over uh, over the next several weeks as DOD continues to push to deploy Office 365 across the military departments, defense agencies, and field activities. 
By the way, I and I wonder because, and correct me if I'm wrong. There's a lot of military here, and they might be caught up somewhat. But didn't didn't the military use a very older, uh, much older system for a very long time because it was more secure? Like they were using, I, I, I'm not going to say it's DOS, but something kind of similar to that for a lot of systems or something close to that or at least a very outdated thing because they knew it was secure. It was something that was very kind of archaic. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's just what I've heard. And I, that wasn't even from military. That was from somebody who wasn't in the military. So tell me, if you're military here, let me know. How do they enter their stuff? Is it, is it an old school system that was safe, and now they're updating to like a new Microsoft 365? I don't know. Defense Information Systems Agency has been piloting the new service called DOD 365. <laughs> 365 days a year, Department of Defense. Secret uh, since January, but officials are now fully deploying it for users across the 17 components of the Office of Secretary of Defense, or OSD, mainly in the Pentagon itself and nearby Mark Center in Alexandria, Virginia. It's a major shift, not only in the one of the DOD's first large scale forays into cloud computing at the secret level so they're about to take everything to the cloud because that's proven to be super safe over the years and it could never get hacked right by china or russia or any of the other places that just keep hacking all of our cloud-based everything i think there's reason why they used to do everything back on you know paper and classified folders and there's probably a reason why all of our presidents have huge boxes of actual physical paperwork of classified stuff. Because if it's in that piece of paper on that thing in that box, then you know where that information is and nobody can just grab it out of thin air. I don't know. It says over the past 10, 15 years, those who live in our classified environment to do their mission have had to really figure out how to stitch together some collaboration capabilities using really old school chat services that aren't very effective and aren't well used across the board. Still doesn't exactly answer my question. Like, I get old school chats and stuff, but what about the actual storing thing? Was it like old school DOS type of stuff? Let me know. Uh, Dex, is, as far as like from a technical standpoint of view, what do you think of them going cloud? And I know they've probably been on some sort of cloud, but... It sounds like so there's been this big thing. there's been this big battle of the cloud providers to get these DoD contracts, and what they have to do is they have to uh, basically create a replica of their cloud and and lock it off and make sure it's not connected to the internet, or if it is, only certain sections of it are that the DoD allows it to be. Um, and it's all to give them the ability to have things stored in a cloud so that the DoD doesn't have to run the servers themselves. Uh, but they've all been fighting for it. Amazon, Oracle, uh, Microsoft, Azure, and in this case, 365 is a little different because that's more of a collaboration tool set with, you know, think of it like Word and Excel, but being able to communicate and collaborate and do video meetings and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it is it is the next, you know, generation, so to speak, or well, it's really the current and older generation, so to speak, for m most business people to have this capability, but the DOD just hasn't because of security. Um, but the first thing I thought of when I, when I saw this is obviously the same thing you already said, which is Microsoft. And how many times have we heard of Microsoft 365, you know, or, or Outlook or whatever you want to call it, getting hacked, having some sort of deficiency, finding this problem. I'm just expecting that we're going to hear this uh, and it's going to be critical because it's going to be a whole bunch of our, you know, top secret classified information. Uh, that gets out and that is possible i guess in the old systems too but it's probably a lot harder because those old systems are have less potential vulnerabilities and because they're old and uh, have been hardened for many 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 decades where this is all being updated and created and advanced every day and every week uh, vulnerabilities appear all the time dan vincent says <clears throat> with the the new ai no nothing on the internet is safe or nothing uh, n nothing is safe. Um, somebody else said something. Yeah, they're not connected to the internet, just like the uh, machines that took our our ballots, right? 
Um, who was that? That back ass word words weird world said didn't uh, Xi just meet uh, with with Vlad or yeah no well no uh, yeah Mr Gates just met with uh, with Vlad just like what was that a couple weeks ago like like not long ago at all. Dex, do you know? I mean, like, I think it was like a week and a half ago. Well, Putin and Xi got together last week, and Xi had the first public meeting with an outsider. Be uh, was uh, Gilly Bates. That was many, many months ago. Yeah, I did, didn't. Doesn't sound. Doesn't. Let me see here. Just so we have the right stuff here. Hold on. And I, I, my, my aunt points this out a lot and, uh, she brings it up. I think she forgets. She tells me, but she always says, you know, in 2016, she got caught in traffic and couldn't go anywhere because they shut down the freeways for Obama. Um, the current president came at that time or whatever. It was 15 and they closed everything down. It was horrible traffic, whatever else. The president didn't go meet with uh oh, oh the president didn't meet g or something but bill gates did like that shows you like bill bill gates had uh the president over at dinner and has and has had g's wife over for dinner like i understand that there's like business deals and things like elon elon also his second biggest producer is over in china i get that there's business things but when you look at the Xi Jinping did not meet all of these high profile U.S. politicians, but he did meet with Mr. Gates. That's just crazy to me. Uh, yeah. So and going back many years, they I mean, think about what what is done at these dinners. Um, this was June 16th. So it was four months ago. Yeah. Almost exactly four months ago, um, G met with uh, Bill and Melinda, or Bill. Don't know if Melinda's hanging out anymore, but. <laughs> uh. um, and let's see here. There was another one. Was it 2016? Let's see. Wait, I hate, you know, sometimes the search in, I, oh, I'm not using DuckDuck, that's why. You know, DuckDuckGo will actually show you relevant things. Google only shows you what they want, want you to see. Like it only, I literally typed in 2016. Oh, 2019, that's what it was. Either way, it says, it should show up with, I would think if you type that in, it would be able to figure out that you mean the 2019 meeting. Every one of these is June 16th. You know why, right? They want to put the story they want you to read in front of you, your face. Not one. Okay, here we go. Oh, that and that was his wife. That was this one in, as well. Either way, this looks super not secure. <laughs> Green screen of death uh, status. Okay. All right, let's move on. And then uh, Meta sued by 42 attorneys general, uh, attorney uh, generals, attorney, attorneys generals alleging Facebook, Instagram features are addictive and target kids. Well, no. Really? We've known this for years. I hope that Meta loses a ton of money in this. I hope they lose, period. But, you know, it will probably be settled out of court in some fashion. Uh, but Dex, what do you think about them suing for having addictive, uh, addictive use for meta? Like everybody knows this. Well, you know, it's things, it's, it's uh, big deals like this that come around that sort of hopefully bring about change and potentially either regulation or, um, the use of uh, the government or the legal system to stop these companies from doing that. And another example of that is like COPA. You know, the COPA laws, when those first came out, they were designed to protect the children under age 13. 
uh, specifically because websites were gathering information about children without the parents' consent. So they created the law that says, hey, you, you ask any question uh, to anybody under 13, you have to have explicitly have the parents' consent, which websites can't do. It just takes too much you know, too much of a hassle to actually figure out how to get a, th a third person to consent to actions that are happening. So all of a sudden, all these websites stopped talking to 13 or kids under 13. Um, or they'd had to do it much differently. So it would be nice to see something like that happen against some of these platforms that are really uh, targeting our youth, um, whether it be under 13 or over 13, even that, even the over 13, uh, when we think about, you know, TikTok and Instagram and how much of our youth is just spending so much of their time uh, in those applications, um, it would be nice to see something come about that can change that. Because I think we're we are losing uh, something very great in our um, in the human existence that we have uh, with our children um, because of these applications. That's so weird. It, this quote here in later in the article reminds me of what because we were just looking up Gates. Very close to his quote. It says, we have polarization, the likes of which we have no, not seen since the Civil War. And so for all the attorneys general from both sides, people who frequently disagree very vocally and very publicly to all come together and move in the same direction. I think that says something. That, that we've heard the, the polarization like we haven't seen since the Civil War uh, so many times lately. Makes you think maybe it's a little bit true. Um. WIS Jen says, you're 100% correct, Dex, at, uh, at Dex J. I agree. Um, I agree, too. Uh, Gates has plenty of homes. Yes, Susan in the house. And, uh, of course, as you know, <laughs> he's got bunkers under all of them. Uh, let's see here. Busy girl, kids' attention spans have decreased. Heck, our attention spans. I hate to say it, there's a part of me that wishes uh, that we could go back to before cell phones. And I know that that would mean my life would completely change too because most of you are on your cell phones watching this. There is a part of me that always gets torn back to the time because I'm like the last generation that didn't have cell phones growing up. Um, the generation after me, just a decade later, they had them in first grade. <laughs> Kids now, um, you can get in trouble for taking your kid's phone away um, even if you pay for it, that's why, by the way, parents, if you're a new parent, you just don't have to buy it for them in the first place. If you don't give it to them in the first place, you can't really get into that position, but who knows what will happen in the future. They might start requiring you to have a kid's phone or something. Who knows? Um, but yeah, people, parents have gotten in trouble for taking phones away from their kids. Uh, my state's a little bit better. If that happens, the, if you have to getting in an argument about the phones and stuff. Uh, I've known people that where the cops come to their house and they take the phone from the kid. Uh, in other States though, I've heard California, there was like a thing where the California or was it Florida? One of those places the the kid ended up saying, well, it was, it was their cell phone and, and got the dad in trouble or the mom in trouble. Like that's insane. Um, you could say all the good things before cell phones, but look at what cell phones have done. There is absolutely no long-term results of what cell phones and tiny screens. Like they always used to tell us like, hey, don't you know watch the TV too close to the screen. And we know that it messes up your eyes. Uh, but what about looking at a six in inch screen all day, every day? And just the fact that people are on it all the time. You drive down the street. How many people have you seen with a cell phone holder playing videos on their dashboard while they're driving down the street? That is absolutely horrendous. Every time, because I'm, uh, I'm very, very against cell phones and driving, and people have said, oh, and I, it's mostly, I guarantee it's got to be the people that do that, and I know some of you do it. I think it's, I think it's really bad, and I think most people know inside if they're doing that, it's bad. And one of these days, if you accidentally hit somebody or hit a kid, it's not going to be fun. Um, but I have lost people in my life to getting hit by not drunk drivers, not sleepy drivers, 
uh, but distracted drivers uh, that were on their cell phones. So maybe that's my bias. Uh, but I, I think this whole cell phone thing, the addic- uh, addiction of cell phones, um, how they have used them for propaganda, how they've used them for everything. Is there a small part of any of you that absolutely doesn't want horrible things to happen, doesn't want a grid down to happen, but it's like a weird, like it's a car crash that you don't want to see, but you don't want to look away. Like you kind of wonder what would happen if we didn't have cell phones and didn't have electricity. I don't know. I I think that uh, I you guys know I'm a very against AI and against this new stuff. And I feel like an old guy screaming, get off my lawn. And I'm not old. <laughs> but um, I do feel like cell phones have ruined people. In general, they have ruined us. Social media has ruined us. Three-letter agencies starting these social media platforms have ruined us. And it's all going in the direction we think it's going. And the only people that see it are the people that can step out and get their brain outside the cell phone for long enough to breathe. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, Dex. I agree. Watching and flipping through TikToks while you're driving, not a good idea. Listening to more Fugle News while you're driving, great idea. Just don't flip through it. Yeah, you can listen to it like a podcast. Do uh, Apple CarPlay. Do Apple CarPlay and then you're uh, able to listen to it like a podcast. Put it through your uh, stereo system. Blast it super loud at, at stoplights. And then video doing it and then turn it into marfuglenews.com slash play my video. All right. Uh, let's see here. Dex, let's go over the web only. We've got a lot of crazy stuff. And just a reminder, make sure to go check out energy, marfuglenews.com slash energy, one of the best solar generators on the market. Make sure to use the code marfugal to save money and to help support us at the same time. It's modular, it's expandable, and it's silent meaning no one will know you have power. Marfuglenews.com slash energy, unlimited power from the sun, paired up with some foldable panels, and it's portable and powerful. Marfuglenews.com slash energy. All right, uh, Dex, let's go over to web only. Speaking of Marfuglenews.com, this is the place to go, Marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show or open up the show notes link down below in the description. It'll take you to the webpage, the bibliography, so to speak, of everything we've just covered. So if you're looking for the sources, they're there. Scroll further down, you're going to find the overflow. Uh, everything else that's happening and, and a lot of additional content that sort of supplements what we've been talking about. So a lot of additional things going on with the Middle East, uh, specifically uh, what's uh, going on with Netanyahu, uh, uh, updates on the hostages, um, some interesting statistics around um, what's going on with gen- what the generational gap is thinking. Um, if you're interested in seeing that, uh, that's there. Um, as far as the troop attacks, the U S troops, they've actually been attacked. There's a statistic now on this. It's 14 times. So, and, and 24 people have been injured. So that's the actual numbers. And we talk a little bit about why, uh, the U S is ramping up what they're doing. It's because of that 14 times they've been attacked and 24 people uh, have been injured from sourced from the Pentagon. Um, we do have some additional uh, things going on with uh, China uh, about uh, relying. It's, an issue, it's more of a, an opinion piece, but it sort of puts together about how they've been using their uh, military to achieve their political goals, which is kind of interesting talking about the recent uh, firing that we just talked about earlier. Um, additional updates uh, across the rest of the world, including down in Mexico, it was sort of a, a horrific day uh, with a lot of people taken out, including police officials taken out in uh, the southwestern states of Guerrero. Um, if you want to know more about that, that's there. There is a, a tool being used to combat uh, these AI uh, art theft, as they refer to it. So these artists uh, are not liking the fact that AI is replicating their work. So there's a new tool that allows them to quote unquote poison the AI model. Um, so now we're going to have AI fighting AI. Um, uh, Got this uh, link from Wages. Got to throw his name out there for sending it to me about this uh, model that can predict the evolution of CV um, and all of the different uh, variants of it. So if you're interested in learning about that and how they're trying to model that out, a little fascinating to say the least, uh, but that's happening. By the way, cocoa prices are going through the roof. 
highest in 44 years, just in time for uh, Halloween trick-or-treating. So if you're a chocolate lover, you're going to be paying more, just like we pay more for everything else in the store now. Uh, so that's going to explain that one. And as we move into the political spectrum, all the political stuff's covered here. Uh, who's crying? Who's uh, you know giving up the goods on T-Man? Who's making a deal? Uh, but I think the best one you really got to see is uh, Shillery. And uh, she's on stage and this guy is protesting her and it gets into a shouting match with her. And uh, she it ends up with, I'll meet you outside. And I'm just thinking to myself, yeah, I don't know if I want to meet her outside. You should know what's going to come next. Dude, so go check that out. Body it's count? on the website. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dude, we got to track that guy. We got to see if he's like, does anybody know who that guy is? Like, it, pray for that man. <laughs> he he held it pretty good. I, he kept it going for a while. It's a longer video. I thought it would have been I'm surprised. You know, 30 seconds and he was out of there, but they kept going. And then he got him to interrupt him again. So I was impressed. Well, th- what's crazy is I'm surprised they let him go so long because you would think it, maybe that was a very small group and everybody was vetted or something. Maybe she doesn't get that because she's never... I don't know though. I, I I don't know um what kind of event did he have to pay a lot of money like because they did not pull him right out. You would think if the second that he got aggressive and started yelling, just pull him right out. They've done that to so many other people, especially with her. Um, and then he yelled and she yelled back. And what you know the and I bet everybody's gonna have. Uh, by the way, the I was actually surprised how she handled it the way she did. She did have some good, just like if, if I've seen, um, um, <clears throat> what's his name? Any big speaker deal with kind of hecklers in the crowd. Surprisingly, she, I don't think she said anything incriminating or anything too bad. I think he could have said some other stuff, but then again, he said the right things to not be thrown out. He was, he was saying correct things, but go, go tell me what you think. Um, I personally, I get like, if somebody's yelling like that, it actually bothers me. But then I was listening to what he was saying, but obviously it's, it's her, right? I, I wouldn't want to be met outside. I'll come to, and then the, she goes, I'll talk to you after the show. And he's like, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. I kind of do. I'll come talk to you. Reminds me if anybody has playing, uh, played the game Gotham Knights, um, the, the court of owls creepily based off of real stuff that I think happens. It's like, um, you know, they're going to put you in some sort of uh, death trap or something. Some weird underground thing with owl masks, like clockwork orange or something. All right. And then thank you, Simple Fix. Thank you so much for the support. I believe you're the top supporter tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Simple Fix. And then another uh, honorable mention. Thank you enough already. And thank you, Kent Reader. I appreciate you both. Thank you guys for supporting our channel, and thank you for supporting Independent. Um, again, to get uh, to get support uh, like that is very awesome. So thank you. All right, and uh, Robert Strickland. Uh, I'm listening to this program right now at work in my patrol car. Robert Strickland, that is awesome. Uh, and thank you for your service, Robert. I appreciate that. That is awesome. Uh, prepper mint good night and pray all prep and pray some more uh remember united we stand be blessed don't be afraid god is in control um by the way if you if you are on patrol if you're police or if you're law enforcement email me tell me what you see on the streets what especially i'd love to hear from metropolises if you are on the beat in a major metropolis what are you seeing change in the last couple of years um what is coming down from your superiors do are you doing an unusual amount of like training about uh, events? Stuff like that is super invaluable because those things are public. You know, those things are public, but they don't get coverage. Like the New York, um, we got a heads up on the New York, um, what do you call it? The, the, where they put a harmless chemical in the New York subway. We got a heads up on that a month before it happened. And that's because a New York police officer ended up e- emailing us about that. So let us know. We'd love to cover that stuff before, uh, you know, everybody else talks about it. So if you know about something crazy or just something you think is very, very odd, obviously don't want to get anything that's going to get you in trouble. But if there's something that is public but not talked about, 
and you think it's strange, in any situation, uh, email us, adam at marfuglenews.com or dex at marfuglenews.com. We're actually better to put both. So one of us will see it. Um, again, that is something, and it, you don't have to be a law enforcement, anybody. If you see something that's not being covered and you're like, why is nobody talking about this? Send it to us. All right, you guys, thank you uh, again. And uh, thank your mods. Make sure to uh, thank them by going over to marfuglenews.com slash friends. Be safe, be prepared, and marf out. It's now time for a shout It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout Hey, life is better on stilts. It's nice to see you. I got, hey, I'm on my David Reed. I dex day in the mist to see if I said the black clad whirly gig everyone. I said Jeff Seven and a Danish girl. Wide awake and angry, Lord Andrew. A busy girl and everybody already knew. I spawn in a 23 carol. I came to clean lot I know the rule. With the tone, you won't Mac 2.0 and the Captain Phil. Olivia Washington for real. I with a monk searcher. Lewis Taylor and the Taylor. Watch, I'm in 1100. I say Dale Val and the Matt and Valor. And I jump on the clone. Don't get on the school buses all alone as the Pelopon. Let's make a fresh one for simple fix. Simple, simple fix. Simple, simple fix. Simple, simple fix. I said push and shot. I said oh I love. I said everybody don't get on my. I said oh no. I would a CJ Blaze, Chance Paladin, and all the ways. I said meet moderator. All the up meet moderator. Life, life is better on stills. I'm more fiddle than a Louis Tramp posh. And a bell in the Mrs. Posh. DFW Jackie, Aki, Agni. I maybe ask me a question. Everybody, it's all gone. Everybody, all that love. Everybody knows from above. I'm